Hey, what's up guys? This is I'm Mark Yoon, and today I'm bringing another hopefully exciting video. So what I want to talk to you about today is actually a little conversation based around some comments and questions that I have not really gotten directly, but I've seen in my comment section. I just wanted to respond to them here. Uh, just for a preface, this is not like uh, attacking anybody. This is just trying to spread uh, some more of my ideas or, or uh, information across the board about what I believe is going to happen in the next iteration of the game. So first of all, let's start with this comment. Uh, it is from Siegfried C, as you can see, and it says, whatever they do, I hope they don't outright remove Siegfried's redemption story from Soul Calibur 3 through 4, but I don't think him and Nightmare will become properly separated until at least the end of Soul Calibur 7, or the beginning of Soul Calibur 8 though, as it was with Soul Calibur 3. However, I'm intrigued to know who will provide the distraction he needs to break free, and I do think Soul Calibur 7 will portray this. Originally that was Raphael, and this led to him being corrupted. I think the new timeline might change who does this instead and makes you wonder if someone else will suffer the consequences that Raphael did in the OG. Then what followed up was actually a response from MNJ, who is a regular commenter subscriber of the channel. And uh, they said that still is very likely to happen, but they are just expanding on it. As well, already manipulated Raphael into looking for Soul Edge. That's what Raphael does in Soul Calibur 2 onwards. In Soul Calibur 6, Aswell gave him some kind of potion or medicine, but knowing Aswell that medicine is surely what will stop Raphael from becoming a full mindless malfested instead of become some kind of vampire as he does in Soul Calibur 3 onwards. Just at this time, they are taking the time to explain and expand on it. Which I do agree somewhat with, and we'll get to my opinions after I read this last comment here. In response to MNJ, Siegfried retorts with, I'd openly welcome that. To be honest, I'd love for them to stick to the same stuff that happens in Soul Calibur 4. The only part of the story that needed fixing was Soul Calibur 5. So maybe a new outcome for the Soul Calibur 4 parts, i.e. Mitsurugi defeats Algol before Siegfried beats Nightmare. Another possibility I thought was that if they do the route of different events, maybe Cassandra fights Nightmare in Raphael's place, and her becoming corrupted later allows for her to save her sister, Sophitia, somehow. We'll see, though. Now, where my opinions actually diverge from uh, the previous commenter is I do not see them going down the same route as they did. If they were, then they would have followed a similar route that Soul Calibur 1 had. Now, we did see some events taking place from Soul Edge and Soul Blade that are, in fact, canon to this timeline as well, but we did not see a great number of things that actually happened in Soul Calibur 1. And I do think that they are going to stick to some story beats and keep some uh events intact but for the most part i think we're going to see an entire revamp of what happened and we saw that revamp starting with the beginning of this game such as huang sung young being removed from time and being trained in like these mystic arts and coming back the formation of the swords and shepherds the fact that algal exists somewhere in the ether that's presumably the algal from the old timeline but has no body um the fact that Ishka Oct is actually a completely different character that they played in the events of Soul Calibur Legends. Uh, a lot of this stuff like correlates to moving in a different direction. Now, I want to explain to you why um, Soul Calibur 4 was part of the problem, even though I did enjoy that game. So, what we have in writing is... Uh, <laughs> Everything has to work in three chapters, right? And unless there's like, even with some kind of cliffhanger at the ending, you still need those three points, you know, the beginning, the middle, and the end, and so forth. And so forth. But where in lies the problem originally was Algol himself. So Algol was far too OP of a character, like within the story, uh, you know, wielding both Soul Calibur and Soul Edge pretty much being a deity at that point and now existing after whatever happened to that universe in the past. And uh, what happens is you need to, to power scale to meet that threat. So this is technically the second game in this reboot. And the reason why I said before in previous videos that I think that Algol is going to possess Ishka Oct or, or in some function that or the evil Soul Edge Sword after they find the Soul Edge Shards and not be his full powered self yet is because they'd write themselves into a corner, which I feel like they did with Soul Calibur 4. Uh, the reason why Soul Calibur 5 started with such a large time skip is the current cast of characters weren't capable of the same kind of feats that it would take to defeat uh, Algol or a larger threat. And what do I mean by a larger threat? How can you get larger than Algol? Well, that's the problem. So 
when you have these characters, uh, and you see this in anime all the time, like with uh, with like DBZ and stuff like that. Like when you start out a normal character, it's all about the story. It's all about the relationships. It's all about how the hero's journey starts and develops. But when we get to the point where we're fighting big bad guys, the heroes need to rise to that occasion. The problem that therein lies within that the next bad guy therefore has to be bigger and a bigger threat. They have to be more grandiose. There needs to be more to overcome because now the hero is set at this new power like set, this new power level. And then it goes on and on and on. That's why in Dragon Ball we see Goku having like throw down drag out fights with Piccolo and then by the end of DBZ he's fighting Majin Buu who like even the gods fear. And then in Super it goes even crazier and more beyond. But that's why I think that uh, Soul Calibur 4 was part of the problem. There's ways that they can drag out the narration to make Algol a background threat or more grandiose than he is and not defeat the entirety of the Swords and the Shepherds in this game along, alone. It's easy to go down the route of Viola and then have Viola and grow, I mean grow, <laughs> Viola and, uh, and Zvi meeting in the Swords and Shepherds and figuring out their plans were lied to or don't align with the Swords and Shepherds and therefore leave the group, not necessarily joining the heroes, but going on their own journey to stop the Swords and Shepherds from attaining like uh, the Sarge of uh, Soul Edge. And we can follow all these different branching teams coming together to a final uh, chapter. I do think that Ishka Oct um, may die in this game. I'm not sure. <laughs> like, if Algol possesses her and her body is defeated and Algol's essence is returned to uh, the Astral Chaos uh, to seek out further power, then um, I can see, like, Nightmare taking over the team, and maybe this time around Siegfried doesn't break free. Uh, maybe this time around some of the events are like completely changed. Like we see Safitia getting pregnant this early and uh, talking about baby names. And this didn't happen until like Soul Calibur like 5 I believe or 4. And uh, that was like way down the line. So even though this is a reboot and a new timeline, we have, we're going by the time specifics, not the game specifics. So I've seen this problem a lot uh, when it comes to people talking about the games. Well, this happened in Soul Calibur 2, and this happened in Soul Calibur 3. Well, if you're going by the actual years and timelines that are taking place in the game, Soul Calibur 6 is already well into, if not exceeding, Soul Calibur 2's timeline. So it's just more evidence and more proof that they're branching in a completely new narrative direction uh, just to follow this new direction that they followed. And now this can actually lead to like really good narration and longevity of games. You can have powerhouses within the Swords and Shepherds that uh, maybe one goes down in each game. <laughs> like maybe uh, there's an aspect where they have to overcome a certain feat. Maybe uh, each one of the, the pairs from the Swords and Shepherds has like a part of the... Um, the uh, crystal or the shard from Soul Edge and it needs to be reclaimed in order to complete uh, some kind of new form for Soul Calibur which can defeat Algol when he ever shows up. Um, something like that. That's just an example but that's what I mean by that. Um, so I know that like the commenter was saying that they would like things to stay the same but there's the problem is the narration started the narrative started so early on that that's where the problem lay you can't just simply erase soul Calibur 5 and then do the same thing uh because where does it go from there true you don't have to have a time skip you don't have to replace all the favorite characters with younger versions of themselves pretty much and you don't have to go into a point where we're fighting literal gods but it the problem like especially lied it laid in the narration um there's a big problem that I see that uh, doesn't necessarily need to be fixed because everybody's opinion is completely valid, but I see a lot of people um, in three camps with Soul Calibur, and that's what makes it so difficult to talk about because there's the people that value only the gameplay and only care about uh, the characters' move sets and the mechanics of the game and how the game functions as a whole. Uh, there's the crowd that only cares about character creation and creating cool characters and just like playing online with those characters or playing against friends. And then there's the camp that cares about the narrative and the story and what happens and the character progression and things of that nature. 
Um, there are there is a fourth camp of people that care about all three, but to a lesser like value. I'm just saying that those individuals are like the top three that I've seen. So the mechanic people are not going to care about the narration and the story anyway. Those are the people that are going to say Soul Calibur was two was the best because it was the most balanced and it had uh, the best mechanics and it was the simplest and. Uh, four ruined it with in, in like making supers and five ruined it with uh, All that stuff that five did and six ruined it with reversal edge and we need to simplify it. That's that crowd um, then the the um, Character creation crowd is like uh, I just want to see more cool characters because it gives us more um, move sets to design to bring back, you know uh, more Characters we can create new characters and better more unique characters and this is the camp that usually generally favors Soul Calibur 3 uh, Not just because of the fact that Soul Calibur 3 introduced character creation But also because we simply had the tools to make more unique created characters that were separate from the cast of characters Such as the move sets that would evolve over time until you eventually unlock the soul of the person who started with those weapons such as Taki uh, that you gain the soul of Taki, which you can either use to clone Taki to yourself, or you can use to keep the original uh, character creation move set, which had different specials and supers and everything. Uh, then the third camp of characters is the ones that care about narration and story. These people generally, um, I I believe these people usually generally care of more about like the original first like two games, uh, that being Soul Edge and Soul Tower One because that's where the storylines start, that's where the cast of characters is introduced, and they want to see what happens to their favorite character in the long run. And none of these are actually wrong, but you have to understand that Project Soul is trying to accommodate all three of these different types of people. And there is going to be shortcuts and limitations based to budget. And why I'm speaking specifically about narrative is because whatever we get mechanically is what we're going to get. Like, uh... Whether they remove Reversal Edge, I have no idea. Whether, like, they get rid of supers or um, nerf the bar or give us more defensive options, I have no idea, like, I, until I play the game. But narration is a lot easier to talk about because you see the progression from before and you can compare it to the progression of now and you can kind of make predictions about where the story is going to go. Uh, that's why I talk about that. And that's a little bit of an off track. But I do want to say that for those of you that want to play or want to experience that exact story uh i don't want to just say play the old games because a lot of people don't have those systems i don't get rid of systems so i have all the those old games but um this is a different timeline and it changed for a reason and if you keep the same story beats that you had exactly before you're going to go down the same narrative path every single soul Calibur has had a different director so every single Soul Calibur has had a different direction and set of goals that it wanted to achieve. Um, with this game, it seems like the narrative is taking the forefront. With the advent of Season 2, and we saw the characters with their new backstories and the DLC characters coming back uh, almost completely different, this is lending us towards experiencing a better story. And whether story in this game is your thing or not, that's not for me to say, that's for you to decide. But uh, I hope that we all as Soul Calibur fans can actually enjoy every aspect of the game, not just partition our expectations towards one set of things or another. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a like. It would definitely help me out. And any and all thoughts are always welcome in the comment section down below. If you would like, you can continue this by going to the Discord, and we can continue whatever conversation you want to have there. There's plenty of people there willing to have uh, friendly conversations and... Like I always say, thank you. Thank you.